this is the AQMS. One of my most recent builds and my first project where I 3D printed the casing for. AQMS is an acronym which stands for Air Quality Monitoring System. It is a device aimed at tracking the presence of several harmful gases and particles in the air using low price and cost effective sensors, with the perk of it having redundancy by using multiple sensors which allow a wide gas sensing range and the ability to calibrate to fit a certain gas or particle that the sensors can react to. All of the readings are then accessible from an IoT integrated app where you can set the calibration value, have graphs showing the previous readings and the device itself possesses an easy to use sleek user interface with OLED screen. Why did I build this you may ask? Just because I wanted to build cool functional things but for a bit of the background story I had just been working on a bunch of stuff and I had interest in the new 3D printers about to get. I then came across a ton of videos on 3D printers and the air pollution that they can actually cause which means you should run your 3D printer in a very ventilated room or have an appropriate HEPA filter or ventilation system that's if you don't have the luxury of a good size window for ventilation. On the other hand, I also took it as the opportunity to add a user interface and interactive menu for the first time in one of my projects using the OLED screen and some personally drawn graphics. So yeah, let's get into how I actually built this. First of all, just like how I mentioned earlier, here are the main points the build had to achieve which I outlined first. 1. Capacity to monitor a wide variety of gases. 2. Alarm and notification capabilities. 3. Calibration to react to specific gases at set point readings. 4. Portability. 5. Which will be chargeable. 6. A nice and simple on-device user interface. This led to some paramount design choices being the following. I had to use multiple gas sensors that allowed the best range of gases which ended up being the MQ2, MQ135, MQ7 and a dust sensor which can respond to the multiple gases on screen based on their data sheets available, now obviously with good calibration. A transistor triggered buzzer alarm, an IoT app for remote monitoring and calibration which in this case I use Blink, a compact electrical design and the use of LiPo batteries to power the entire device. With that out of the way, here's the building process. As always with any project, I first of all develop a circuit diagram. For pretty much all of my breadboard to variable projects, I use Fritzen as it's quite visually appealing and I do not need to make PCBs or rather I do not make PCBs yet and they fit the use cases. I also used Fusion 360 to make the model of this design. I initially designed it with a transparent top and bottom case linked together with these hex spacers that had screws to go in and hold everything together. The bottom case would house the variable board which would have all of the sensors, the AGC, microcontroller, batteries and other components soldered on while the top would house the screen, the push button for the interactive user interface. The core was opened and exposed to the surrounding in order to detect the changes in the air. Here's the history of the design and animation I made. If you've watched this far, it's time for today's sponsor, me. I have no sponsors. Over 95% of the people who watch me blab about electronics, tech, and engineering for minutes are unsubscribe. And for those who are, are yet to, I appreciate you and your efforts. Click the subscribe button down below and turn on post notifications because here at Digens, I am dedicated to building more advanced robotics, embedded systems, and electronic projects aimed to surpass my previous builds every time. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more content and as we try to hit 2000 subs before the end of the year, I'm also going to be posting new videos every two weeks and it's been quite difficult with the whole of other things I have going on but I'm looking forward to trying to keep up with that schedule but yeah, now back to the project. All the designs and files will be up on my GitHub link down in the description. Let's get into the building process then. First of all, I got all the components and modules that are listed in the description and also in the design files.
Now, with all the components, I started out by testing my jumper wires because I got a bad batch which caused me to have to test for continuity for every single one of them and it wasn't funny, not, not that was just a nice thing to do. I was literally losing my mind doing this all the time. I started out by making the prototype with the first sensor being tested. Next, I connected the three sensors to the ads 115 dc and then connected that to the s 32 microcontroller via i 2 c Yes, I know I didn't use a logic level converter like in the design I made as the ADS-115 has its VCC connected to 5 volts and that would cause issues with the 3.3 volt logic pins of the s 32 I'm well aware of that fact. It wasn't that I didn't want to but rather that the logic level converter I had didn't work and since it worked without it, I figured, you know, don't question it. Once I was done with that, I moved over the last sensor which was the dust sensor and just so you know, the pinouts do not coincide with the color of the pins. It also comes with a capacitor and resistor for the module and it's best to use them in the design. I wrote up a bunch of C++ code and got it all working, having all the sensors reading and on display like you can see here. The next thing I did was to develop the Blink app which had gauges to display data from all four sensors and corresponding charts for them. Then I added the gas threshold which allows you to set a point for the alarm to start going off based on the sensor readings. With that out of the way, I focused on power supply which would come from two lithium polymer batteries in parallel connected to this 18650 cell lithium polymer battery charge and discharge module that boosts the output to 5 volts and does all the battery monitoring and charging. It is also connected to a type C port for input. I used the output to test the intensity of the buzzer sound and it was pretty good so I scrapped the boost converter idea that was supposed to raise the voltage even further to make the buzzer sound really really loud. The next thing I did was to set everything up including the transistor that was switched on and off the buzzer and test out the real time readings and gas threshold effectiveness. With the prototype mostly done, all that I had to do was just solder it on the very board, right? Right? <sighs> well, there was UI that I wanted to work on but we are getting ahead of ourselves a bit. And so, the soldering torture began. Don't get me wrong, I got the skills but it's still a lot of route planning and making tight solders when you are tired by 2am and the work is not nice at all. Have you ever slept with a soldering iron in your hand before? Yeah. Anyway, I set up with the soldering of the headers for the three gas sensors and then connected all the 5 volt pins and GND pins through a route. I soldered headers for the ADS-115 and routed all the pins to their respective lines and points on the headers, which I soldered for the ES-32. After that, I then got to working on the charge and discharge module to work alongside the battery which went well without any issues. Next came the final assembly and soldering of the remaining components after checking out how they fit on the board, arranging and rearranging to get the most compact to optimal arrangement possible. With everything done, this was the final product of the main circuit board for the device. Now came the casing. Luckily enough for me, the new 3D printer arrived just in time 
so you can go watch the video on how my first experience 3D printing went and the setup. But yeah, I know the final prints weren't as polished as it could have been and that's as a result of my inexperience and 3 power outages in the printing process. So the recovery feature came in clutch. Filament also ran out while the last bit of the top cover was printing, I mean it was 87% done and all that, but I had learnt my lesson and learnt it well which is why I didn't reprint it. Alright, so what I worked on next was a detachable connector for the OLED screen so you could easily and safely remove the top cover without damaging the wiring. With that out of the way, I then did change the buttons to have less wires sticking out and also use the same header connection joint I made to prevent the connections from being ripped off if the cover was being removed. Then I ran the test to see if the UI was working as intended, which you can see here. Yeah. Bunch of final tweaks. We have one device, AQMS. We have one, two, three, four. This is one. Then you have to put on the device again. I also added the sensor warm up wait time, Wi Fi connection stage, and main sensor alarm selection menu. The selection menu was done because the Blink app only allowed for 5 different data streams, so in order to allow you to pick which sensor was best suited for your needs without having to pay more money, I can't even afford for their pro service. Just for a prototype project, I decided to do it this way using the on device design interface. Finally, now I could glue on the last components and close up this project. I also have some little things here and there, but here is the final result. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. To end the video, here is a test to show the responsiveness of how the device works. First of all, you can see the real-time values on the IoT platform, which has an app, but I stuck with the web app on my laptop for this demonstration. And then, let's look at calibration and the operation with the alarm configuration. You put on the device, make sure your Wi-Fi credentials are set up properly, let it connect to the Wi-Fi, and then warm up the sensors. As it comes on, there's a loud beeping alarm sound which will prompt you to set your gas threshold in the app. For this case, we'll be using the MQ2 sensor. So we now take note of our reading in air, and then I use perfume as a trigger. It's much easier and safer than making a fire for smoke to be honest. With the value of the sensor in the clean air known, I spread the perfume. Now pause. Why perfume as a test? Well that's because many perfumes contain ethanol, alcohol and other volatile compounds which can be detected by the MQ2 and MQ135 sensor. They are sensitive to a range of gases including alcohols and other hydrocarbons like those found in perfumes. After the perfume was sprayed, I observed the value that is reached. Then I set the threshold value just below it and then spray the perfume again and the alarm came on. Okay. So 
zero point five, zero point four nine. So I also did the same thing for the MQ135 sensor and it worked. With that, the project is done and if you watched this far, I really really appreciate you and I hope you either learned something, got some inspiration or got entertained by me blabbing about electronics for the past few minutes. Keep building cool, functional, tech based and engineering stuff just because you can and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe or else.